Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope all of you are doing really, really well. So, this is your transfer rumor latest as we've got loads of things happening in the market. Sandra Tonali, Declan Rice being the two main topics. So, before we get into that, please do like and share this video. If you like me on this channel, please do also subscribe to the channel as well, as that is very, very crucial to the channel and to myself. Continue making these videos for you guys. So starting off with the big one. This was a very very quick one and Sandro Tonali to Newcastle it could be happening so yesterday's video I was talking about him to Chelsea maybe Newcastle were interested I said Newcastle are ahead and if I was Tonali I would pick Newcastle and he's just done that he's gonna pick Newcastle Newcastle the only team who bid and they're gonna get their man now uh, according to Romano's report here it's gonna be Sandro Tonali's final meeting everything's gonna be done very, very soon for 70 million euros very very good bit of business from Newcastle I think this is excellent bit of Bit of business here. Tonali is a very experienced but young player. He can play many positions. He can play the six. He can play an eight to a very high standard. He can also be the leader. He was the captain of Russia. Uh, he was very and vocal. He's like a Gattuso vibe type of player. It's good too. He's he has to compare himself to Gattuso plenty of times. So that's thing. That's why I feel like he could be more in that Gattuso type mode of player. Him and Bruno G could complement each other pretty well because both can take the load on possession but both can take the load off the possession so in terms of defensive work as well so I think that's why this is an excellent deal maybe Newcastle have paid slightly more maybe 20 million extra but I still think this is something that could be worth it in the future as in think Newcastle's future is pretty much secured I think Eddie House going to change the system to a 4-2-3-1 so let's see who who does he go for in that number 10 role it's going to be Shoprashly, it's going to be Madison, it's going to be someone else, so it's going to be someone else, let's see. But I think Tonali to Newcastle is a very dangerous moment now for the rest of the Premier League because now the Newcastle owners have gone bam, 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 six gear, they're going to splash cash. And now uh, I had the feeling if they, if, because before the end season ended, if they got top four, I still find it difficult for them not to see more investment coming in compared to now and even more higher level of deals happening then they were already and last season they made some really good signs Isak, uh, Poe, but I thought they were great signings but these, this summer I think they're going to notch it up a level here because they're in the Champions League they want to do well in the Champions League consistently stay in the top four and slowly slowly they're going to build as team as they're taking step by step and they're going to get rid of plenty of players your your shares, your Dan Burns, your Popes, your maybe even Trippiers your uh, Willocks, your Longstaff, your Wilsons your San Maximan, they won't be there when Newcastle have completed this project, in my opinion. And Tonali is the start of that project. And he coming in is a big, big moment. I'm surprised. I I am actually genuinely surprised they have managed to pull this coup off so easily. For like just two days, bang, done. Like this guy was meant to be an AC Milan captain one day. He was meant to be the future of AC Milan. And Newcastle just gone like that. It's just, just mental how they've done this. And of course, Tonali's wages are going to be doubled from his days at East Milan. And that's the main reason why he's joining Newcastle. Plus, they're going to be probably one of the best teams in the world. So, can't blame Sandro Tonali. I think it's a tremendous opportunity to play in the Premier League. Play probably the one of the most developing clubs, one of the most exciting projects in the world. In Newcastle, I think this is a personally a very, very good bit of business for Newcastle. Moving over, we've got Declan Rice. Looked like Arsenal had put every single basket in this Rice deal. And it looks like things are going pear-shaped. As Manchester City are expected to bid for Rice. And Manchester City normally they have a history of going away from players who have competition. Be it Kukreya, be it some other players I've seen in the past. They, as a result they have not really had a bidding war. But this time they're willing to have, go into a bidding war. And this time they want Declan Rice. And that says two things about the player. One, Pepper Prince of the player. Secondly, the City rate him really, really highly. And this will be a big statement from City to make after losing Ilkay Gundogan, probably a very important team in that part of that City team, to begin Declan Rice, I think it'll be great. Now, I think there's two ways Arsenal to see where City would lose him. City would use him as an eight. Maybe as that connector from Rodri to the attack, and he'll be more aggressive, he'll be the number eight. But for Arsenal, he'll be the natural six. He'll try to keep things simple, he'll care the ball, and he'll give it to the better player, maybe Odegaard, or your yeah, uh, Lavias, etc., and he'll be the first guy to get the ball, and he'll be the natural number six. And so there's two approaches, and this one is very, very important for Rice to pick with the right one. And now the one thing that Arsenal do have above Man City is guaranteed game time. I think 
If he joins Arsenal, he'll definitely get game time more than if he would at Arsenal. I mean, not at Arsenal, at City. Because City, they've got so much talent. They've got Kovacic, Rodri, Phillips, uh, Foden, De Bruyne. So much talent. So you're not going to be playing week in, week out. So I think that's, that's why this is uh, something that is very, very good. And something that could very, very happen soon. And I think City, if they want to play, I think they will beat Arsenal with two rice. But Arsenal, they have done the most groundwork. So let's see how good their groundwork is. Let's see if they actually manage to get the player to convince properly. And if, and let's see. But this is also means some bad news for Chelsea. If Ch if this deal goes pear shape for Arsenal, they could look at Casado, which I really do not want them to do that. I want them to go for Rice, as Rice is not going to us. So might as well let them have Rice so we can get Casado. But if they get Casado, we meant to get Rice. We're going to fall even more behind. And we will need to sign a top class defensive midfielder. And our options will be very, very limited, personally. Anyway, uh, who do I expect to get Rice? I think this saga is still very early. I think it's got more developments to do, especially with Manchester entering the saga. I think it's got more twist than I eventually thought. Moving over, we got to talk about Manchester City's legend, Ilkay Gundogan. He's off to Barcelona. for And all the documentation was sorted. Yesterday I was talking about all the documentation not being there, so... The, Move official isn't done, but now it is done. It is here we go from Fabrizio Romano for uh, Ilkay Gunman and Gunman going to Barca. Interesting, I must say, it's very interesting because how is Xavi going to say as midfield? I've got Pedri, Gavi, De Jong, Gundogan, Kessi, Torre. I oh, that's a lot of midfielders, a lot of midfielders. And I think from Kessi all of a sudden has a big role in this team because from Kessi is the most defensive and minded midfielder in that team right now. Maybe you can try playing Gundogan in a 6, but I personally don't think that works. It could work against the smaller teams where you're going to have 70% of the ball minimum. And you can play the 6, but I think he's suited to an 8. So I don't know how Xavi's going to use both Pedri and Gundogan. Both suited to a left-sided of a midfield 3. But Barca have got a double line, and he's a treble winner. So hopefully we'll get that mentality boost to the Barca Milano players. Hopefully they can see an improvement from Europe. Uh, moving over to, to talk about Thomas Partey, so Juventus have registered an interest for this guy. Sadio will be willing to offer 40 million though. I think this one's going to be interesting because I think Arsenal sh it should look to sell him to Saudi. 40 million in the bank, guaranteed. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be there. But if they sell to Juve, maybe they can do some bargaining. I don't know. But Juventus, they're, they're working on sales at the moment. So are most of talent is like Inter and rest of the lot. And they're right now, I think if Juventus do, they're looking at Rabia, they're looking at Zachariah to make sales before Partey. So I think the trail, this if if Partey wants to go to Juve, it's going to be a good, long saga, this one. But I think personally, I think Partey will go to Saudi. But Juventus being in there, it's going to be interesting. I think he'll suit Allegri well because he's played into a similar defensive style of football at Atletico Madrid as well. And it's the So I don't, don't doubt that Partey will not fit the defensive style of football that Allegri will play. Uh, moving over, we also got to part Chelsea. Our uh, multi club model is in full string, swing as Strasbourg is under now our command. And we're hopefully, we're going to get loads of talent from France. And we're going to be able to send most of our talent on loan to their uh, Strasbourg as well. It's going to be so crucial to keeping younger players because they will have they will have the opportunity to go to Strasbourg, prove themselves. They may be pushed for Chelsea. We're also looking at a Portuguese team. So that's going to be interesting to see where that goes. I think it's Rio Alavi with most likely being the candidate. And I'm just happy that this multi club model is in full swing because we need it and we need to get our running quickly so we can give our young players a pathway. I'm happy with that. And let's see how that continues to help our players. Moving over, we've got to talk about Tottenham Hotspur. And they could be going in for Jorginho Vicino, the goalkeeper of Empoli, for 20 million euros. I think this person is a very good deal, very, very good business for Spurs. Look, Vicino is not your ball-playing goalkeeper, but neither was Joe Hart at Celtic, and Ange turned him to a ball-playing goalkeeper, so Ange knows what he does with goalkeepers. So I think I would definitely fancy him to do really, really well at Spurs. Plus, he's a very good shot stuffer, cross, good cross gamer. Now, Vicino is a number of, he's an Italian goalkeeper, but he wouldn't probably get into any of the Italian top teams, so I think him going to Spurs makes a lot of sense. Number one spot is literally there for him. No one else is really challenging him. He's going to be playing in the Premier League, the best league in the world. He's going to be playing for one of the better teams in England. And I think if he can prove himself, he got more chance of being number one of Italy as well. Gigi Donnarumma is terribly out of form in my opinion still. But anyway, 
This was my latest on Sandro Tonali, my latest on Declan Rice, my latest on uh, Chelsea's multi club model, my take on Richiano joining Spurs, and my take on Thomas Partey. If you like this, and you're quite a good one as well. If you do like this video, please do like it and share this video. If you like my movies in general, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Leave me your opinions in the comments down below. And I hope to see you guys later.